The best is yet to come and babe won't it be fine You think you Hello everyone, welcome to a special episode of Ask the Trexperts. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Brandon. And I'm Adam. I did not ahead of time decide who was going to You guys were like, who's going to talk now? Uh, today, we're going to give you a quick non-spoiler review of Star Trek Beyond, Star Trek Out of Darkness. And uh, Beyond this, the Darkness. And uh, usually we'll do how we felt about it. And, you know, we've got the sign and we'll flip it. But uh, we've got three of us, so instead of doing the boards and all that rigmarole, I thought what, what we would do is uh, start with a super brief synopsis. Uh, hey, we're, we're finally out in... To the frontier, you guys. Uh, yeah. That's kind of kind of the that, that's kind of the synopsis. Uh, we, we're, we went somewhere. It's really exciting. We're not on Earth at all. Oh boy, that's yeah. so exciting and refreshing. And so what I thought we would do is I'll start with a real, real brief synopsis, and then we'll go to Brandon. And uh, Brandon, I'll have you give me a best thing and a worst thing. Okay. And then uh, we'll do that with us, and then we'll just have some general discussion for about 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, and again, non-spoiler, so we'll be real careful right. because uh, we we saw it, uh, you know, th I, mean, I feel like movies open on Thursday now, but we still pretend like it's early. So anyway, right. lots of people haven't seen this yet. So... Uh, Star Trek Beyond uh, has us basically at the end of the third season. If this was a TV show, uh, and we so so we're uh, we're at the end of uh, the the, the uh, third year of the five year mission, and uh, Kirk and Spock are both uh, kind of in in a uh, in in a, in a in a weird like transition place, trying to decide what they're going to do with their lives, and uh, we wind up in a really catastrophic situation out on the edge of the frontier that sees our crew stranded on a planet, and uh, with a pretty intriguing villain this time, I thought, uh, who has a really cool, um, uh, intriguing mystery that we're trying to figure out through the whole thing. Uh, it's not exactly what we've had before with these villains. It's not just another uh, revenge plot. And, like, it's a revenge plot in a way, but it's an interesting one uh, in a yeah. way that it hasn't been before, I think, with these. Over and, a different time scale, even. Yeah. And uh, it is it is uh, it is much more than what we've had before. Um, really kind of what TOS is in a, lot, in a lot of ways, I think. Um, and so... That's uh, I think that's enough for synopsis. So we'll go ahead and start with Brandon. Brandon, uh, what was your favorite thing and your least favorite thing, or just a really just a good thing and a bad thing? A uh, good thing about this movie, uh, still hard to place a favorite thing because there there were a lot of really interesting things that I'm still taking some time to digest. But one of the one of the good things about this was the fact that this felt okay. I like to say about Star Trek 09. I liked it. It was an okay movie, but it wasn't great Star Trek. This bordered on actual, like, kind of good Star Trek. This was a Star Trek movie, and I feel like everything finally came together. And the cast, and I am so sorry about to hear about Anton Yelchin, but, like, he was great in this. Uh, everybody was great in this. They came together. They really worked together. And you got the sense that they were an actual crew, and that was a really good thing for me. Um... One of the interesting things about this was that, well, there, there were moments that started to lose me, and I really was kind of unsure, and that I'm playing is kind of one of my least favorite things about it. However, I will say this, every time that happened, I was pulled back in. Well, how much of that is because of expectations from what we've had before with this? That's a really interesting point because a fair bit of it, maybe 60-40. 60 40. 60 percent is like, oh, what I my see where they're going with this were. because of what this usually is. Right. And, and then, then for me, I had that a lot of them they would subvert it. They would. They'd kind of pull the rug a little bit and you're like you're stumbling around, and you're like, whoa, I did not see that coming. How much of this though, there were things from the trailer that any number of us thought just looked totally outrageous for a Star Trek movie, and we were all worried that, you know, Simon Pegg was trying to say don't pay too much attention to that trailer, you know, it, it's going to be better than what it is. How right that was. I did not expect, I had certain expectations and I thought maybe it was going to be okay. This was way better than what I thought we were going to get. 
Yeah, things in content. Like, like the name of the of the game this year, or the big lesson for me this year with trailers is context. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And that's and that's true so often, but there have been a lot of things like like Ghostbusters had this some there 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 have been a lot of things this year where, where the trailer have been like I cannot have, like I try not to look at trailers as what the movie's going to be because it's just trying to get you to go. But then you know I'll see a thing and I'll be like, how in the world is that going to be? Like Spock has that line in the trailer where he says it's you know, like like the fear of death is illogical, and I was like, wait a minute, the guy from 09 wouldn't say that. He invented the Kobayashi Maru in the context of the scene. He's not saying what you think he's saying. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, they, cool! They spy stuff up in a way right. that, that I... And this is another advertising campaign that is not as good as its film, right. but it's a better adver- advertising campaign than Ghostbusters after that that initial that, that. That, that initial teaser, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kudos to them for making the motorcycle work. I thought that was... So really, many things that really now, interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about something. Did, did you did you have did you have a real solid like this was bad? Like like, like you know, real, no, real, real solid, like 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 no, bad thing like like because yeah. because your because your not good thing was kind of vague like did you have did you have a real solid oh, no, no, like no. like uh, worst thing a, a solid worst thing yeah. about this um, I can't say that I do okay cool specifically it, it's kind of vague the worst about it was kind of vague I actually enjoyed it best thing worst thing um, like Brandon said I really thought that actually felt like a Star Trek movie for once and not just a generic. Sci-fi, maybe, it's still you know? super action driven. But it's still yes, yeah, still very action driven. But it actually felt like a Star Trek story, yeah. And stuff and uh, I really liked how that it seemed like they they really worked with the ensemble in this movie to get all the characters. Uh, you really got a lot of good moments from I think everybody in this film. And, uh, as far as what I didn't like, I don't know. I mean, I liked every uh, I. Maybe just explain the just a few. There's a few things about Idris Elba's villain that maybe they could explain a little bit more. But other than that, I don't really have a lot of huge wow. complaints. Wow, like and I that's did. exciting coming from you because I know how much you hated Darkness, yes. like to the point where you didn't even see it a second time. Right. <laughs> um. So when I I gotta throw this out there real quick. When I I uh, saw 09 and Darkness. I was so blinded by getting more Star Trek again, <laughs> finally, that I found it very difficult to look at those critically. Uh, we'll see what this is like on multiple viewings. I don't feel like I'm having that with this right. uh, because I, I'm like, like I'm already thinking of things to criticize. Like, 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 like. I don't, I don't feel super uh, blind, and 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 some of that I think is because this is a real simple, straightforward story. Right. And I'm so excited right. about that. Uh, this is a this is a two part episode in the best possible way right. it could be. Oh yeah. Um I or like two hour episode in right. the best Beecher possible length, way yeah. it could be in that yeah, in that oh, I thought that you said feature length. <laughs> <laughs> this feature length <laughs> film. <laughs> but, no, we don't want a feature length <laughs> film. That would have been a much like that would have been a movie that you would have uh, enjoyed but would have liked to have seen the last six hours right. cut out. So that's right like back into darkness. <laughs> Or into at least slow motion, Ville. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I feel like I, I don't. I, I really doubt that I'm gonna go see this again and be like, oh wait, it's not. It's not. It's not as good as I thought it was. Um, let me just say that that like that like character stuff, thematic stuff, all of that. Not genius, but solid. Right. Yeah, definitely. I was solid. excited about darkness when I first said. If you go back and look at my how we felt about on, on or, or, or how we felt about our darkness, we we are we are just absolutely beside ourselves. Yeah. And I think part of that. And then we did a spoiler cast. And we were like, "Wow, you guys are nitpicking this movie." You liked it. Like, "Wow, well, we saw it again." And we had issues. Um, <laughs> the, the thing the thing with the thing with darkness was I was excited that it was actually a story. Where I felt right. like oh nine was oh, not yeah. so much. Right. Um, this not only was a story, but I felt like it was as story driven as you could really as you would really expect for a thing that's trying to be so accessible right. to an to action audience. audience. And right. I and, and I and I don't and I don't feel like I'm like like lowering my standards too much by saying that. Like I felt like there are some action scenes that for me go on a little too long. Mm-hmm. But I felt like overall they served the story and it was focused. Like it really uh, it, it, it really like 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 starts with an idea, gets the ball rolling, wastes no time, and oh, then yeah. um, and then like it's just it's just a Star Trek episode. One thing that I was kind of concerned about was when when we do get the 
the very big thing that happens very early on, and you can see part of that in the trailers. Yeah. Uh, I was concerned about the pacing for the rest of the movie. Me like, too. What was going to happen after we got this so early? Yeah, thanks. How could that come in so early? What's going to happen now? The, I really expected everything to fall apart after that. Right. And was so mind blown that it didn't. I, I don't know if you had that where I just kept... Did you have that where you were just like, okay, at what point does the other shoe drop? I was expecting it to happen pretty early, frankly. Yeah. Just based on. So did it win you over fast enough that you stopped feeling that like that? that yes, yeah, so I didn't feel like I, I. Even in the third act, I was I was sitting there going, okay, at what point does it? And I have to say, there are some really kind of kind of uh, uh, in in plotting and stuff, some really kind of typical formulaic stuff. Like you like you know, you know you know you can you can look at this compared to the other two and go, okay, the skeleton is there, yeah. but it's it just feels like they finally. Did it right, right to me? They they gave us a better representation of Star Trek than we've gotten in these last two movies, exactly. and, yeah. and in, even in Nemesis, really. I mean, just that train wreck. <laughs> Real quick, I'll go for. I'll, I'll do my best thing, worst thing. Um, oh, I yeah. have so many things I could go for best thing. I think I'm gonna, and I'll give some other positives here in a second. I think I'm gonna give it to directing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm. I'm going to go this far, and this I don't see changing on multiple viewings. I'm going to go this far, you guys. I don't want Abrams bad. There's, there's talk, because we know we're going to get a Star Trek 4. There's mm-hmm. talk about, or at least they're, they're, they're talking that really heavily, um, and we've even heard some potential plotty things I already about it. I think they're side on. Are they, well, I, I know that they're, right. that, that, that they're, con, that they're contracted, but on how if does. this doesn't do real well, right. they could ax it, certainly. Well, that doesn't true. mean they're going to make it. Um, but there's already been talk about, like, they want to do a thing with Kirk's dad and stuff. Um, which, by the way, I expected that, to be a much larger element of this, and was kind of surprised that that, that 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 was ultimately kind of just Kirk's impetus for his character arc in the first place, and we didn't dwell on it. It was kind of an underlying um, theme, but it wasn't out in the open. They only mentioned it. Once. Yeah, it was kind of part of a, bi- a bigger, you know, a, a bigger thing for him. But but anyway, so um, I want to see Justin Lin back, and I cannot believe I am saying that. Uh, just based on, okay, he's the director of the Fast and the Furious movies, I was expecting nothing. I was like, okay, of course. Paramount went to him because he's a big action director. And yeah, we've got a motorcycle, and I guess he brings some of the chase stuff to that. But um, this is more than competent. Right. Like, it's really well directed for this kind of thing, I, I think. Um, right. There's some... There's some like here and there are some CG integration issues and stuff, but I don't think any more than there has been no. yeah, before. Not, not any more than that. I want to know how the, much of this was practical. Probably not a lot, but probably and some. And often you can kind of tell where it's like, yeah. okay, they built this much, but this the, right. but this stuff must For be sure. digital. But beyond yeah. just special effects, um, his choices are often wildly creative. Right. I was blown away. Oh, the shots of the ship, the up close shots, and when you're following, th- when you're following the ship, and not just the ship passing in front, but the, those shots where you're following it, those were great. There's this bit. I mean, there's so many cool shots I could point to, mm-hmm. but there's this bit, and, and and let me say that just overall, this has a th- this has a really um like like I don't want to say. I don't know if unique is is right. I don't, I don't know if it's fair to go that far, but like, but like, it has a uh, really consistent tone all the way through, and I was and I was enjoying the moodiness of it. Um, but the there's the shot where he uh, where you know, where some of this is is digital, mm-hmm. but there's this shot where he takes the camera and it's outside of a ship, and then you go inside the ship. And you see people in uh, an actual practical shot, and then you go back out into a digital shot, and it's the seamless one shot. It mm-hmm. looks fantastic. You guys, I expected this to look like a rush job because they started it so late, mm-hmm. and I felt like it was um, the most thoughtfully put together of right. them. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. You wow, seem like I just somebody that we, you know actually got. The subject and stuff, and and really liked it right, a lot. Really, like, yeah. and, and you can see that in the writing, and you can see that in the directing. Uh, right. Like, there's so much stuff that that he said in interviews, and that Simon Pegg has said in interviews that sounded potentially like with 09, just kind of uh, like like pandering or trying mm-hmm. to make people, you know, trying you know, to okay make you come stuff. to see the movie right. and being. Uh, like 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 well, in, in trying to appease fans that then won't be appeased after they saw it. Right. Um, 
Justin Lin made a really big deal out of how much he loves Star Trek and really, really wanted this job and, and how he campaigned for it, and I believe... Well, he handled it. He handled it very well. That's really exciting. Mm. Can I say one, um, of my, one of my favorite shots in this movie yeah. was the shot of Kirk, Bones, and uh, Spock. When they lined that up, I thought that was just a really good service to the... Uh, the Trinity, if you will. It's also an homage to a particular shot in a TOS episode. Oh, um, that was it? very Spectre of the Gun, I thought. Oh. Oh, I didn't. Even, where was the shot? Right at, at the, the very, end? right toward the very end. Oh, okay. When they they, li- they line them up. Now, oh, Spectre okay, of the Gun, like Spectre of the Gun, right? Yeah. But you know what I'm talking about? Yes. That's a shot that they the use a lot on yeah. the front of DVD covers and things, mm. right? Um, because Indeed. it looks, it's one of the more modern-looking shots in TOS, right. and so they use it all the time. Right. Uh, but yeah, um. It, I'll, 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 I'll try to come up with a good worst thing real quick, and then and then we can talk about some some more of that kind of stuff. Um, I I guess it's um, I guess it's that by the end I would have liked and and like I mean this is too much to ask for. I I, ju- I just would have liked some of the uh like like thematic ideas, particularly the stuff about um about uh, mortality. And, uh, and and stuff to kind of come out a little bit more to the forefront, and things seemed a little bit too easily tied up by the end mm-hmm. um, with character arcs that we started at the beginning, where it was just kind of predictable, um, a, a, like 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 a little bit, and, and it's just sort of you know you would expect that. Again, the a, a lot of like the message and theme in this is what it has been teamwork, just vaguely what the Federation is about versus modern cynicism, uh, you know, optimism versus pessimism, all that stuff. We just did a better job with it this time. Um, let's, let's real quick uh, piggyback, two big things I want to talk about, piggyback off of, um, off of something that you mentioned, uh, which is the, uh, the ensemble nature mm-hmm. of this. Um, or maybe you mentioned, I forget. Um, but, but, the, but, but so, so uh, not only do people get uh, moments in this, but every character feels really well integrated and necessary mm-hmm. to the story. Like right. everybody, right. and not just that it was coincidence that that character happened to be there at that time to do the thing. It right. was they actually went there with a purpose. They saw there was a need, was a and they like that. Yeah. Like when Uhura went down to help the captain, and and right. well, I won't give away what she was right. accomplishing, but she was there for a reason, and it worked. Um, I mean, she's probably the character in this that is the least compelling and has the least interesting stuff to do. I think I, probably. Yeah, I, would, I, I would. I would give it that. Um, I mean, she's not irritating like I found her in in places before. I mean, she was fine. Um, but but like I, I don't know. I was excited that we had real triad stuff. Yeah. That Kirk Spock and McCoy are the the triad like they right. were in TOS, and that McCoy gets. So much to do. Right. Oh, and there's, exactly. there's good. And that's play a thing that if you've not seen it yet, will really excite the, people. The interplay because between Spock and McCoy. In this e- exactly. Movie too. And exactly. Was, and I thought it was spot on. Right. Especially after they land, and I when when he makes the modification to the device, and oh man, he gets he gets a good one in there. Yeah. Certainly does. Um, I also kind of expected this to turn into Scotty's movie at some point, and it doesn't do that. Uh, just because Simon Pegg was writing it and he was all over the trailers, right. like, I kind of expected it was gonna be, he, he would get like a big character arc and he would sort of feel like, be a, like a romance with the the woman. I yeah. thought so too. Yeah, with with, uh, with or the character's name right. is Jayla, which yes. I have to bring this up because it cracks me up. So I, I told you guys about yeah. this. Uh, the, 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 some of the advertising campaign for this, as we've as we've said, oh, is yes. kind of lousy and hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Simon Pegg understands what he's doing with this movie. Justin Lin gets funny. Paramount does not know what they're selling. And they sold it like another... That's why they mishandled the first two movies. Really throwaway, action schlock, nothing kind of movie. Which again, it is action schlock, but not too schlock. Like, like, like it's, it's it's solid. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Uh, but but uh, on their on their social media, on their Facebook and stuff, they, <laughs> they, uh, they, they say, they have a picture of her, and they say, meet Jayla. She's... Uh, edgy, edgy. Yeah. and I was like, and then I saw the movie, and she's not. And I don't know what they're talking about, and I don't she's know why they think edgy. that it's the mid nineties again. But um, yeah, I liked her. Uh, you, she could have been a Kiss fan. You mentioned a Voyager episode. Mm. Yes, Gravity. 
And I felt Lori like Petty. just in general, she felt like kind of a Voyager. She felt like Lori Petty in that episode. Lori Petty yeah. had her own ship, and then she had that <laughs> all those like traps and stuff. That oh she yeah, had. it's the yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it makes a big deal out of the ensemble cast thing because it it wants uh, you know so much to be a teamwork movie and the idea and, and not just teamwork but the idea of course um, being all about you know they talk a lot about unity. I was actually a little bit surprised the movie wasn't called Star Trek Unity. Yeah. Given that, and I'm glad it wasn't, but like, um, but but uh, but that just kept coming up, and I was just thinking, I'm surprised that that's not the title of this movie, and um, and so they make it very much uh, about the the whole the whole cast. Um, everybody is so seasoned and knows what they're doing now. Right. And if I had if I had written a sign for this, Brandon, uh, it would have it would have said, "This movie makes me wish that I could see the rest of this TV show." Right. Yeah. Well, so, you know they've been they've been together from as I was watching an interview with Zoe Saldana on a, on a Colbert Report, and she said they've been doing this. They've been filming for nine years now, doing Star Trek. Right. And so it really shows by this point. It definitely but shows. I don't think it's just in the camaraderie of the cast. I think it's. In the writing and the directing, all like 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 yeah, sure, it's there in the in, in the acting. But I guess the point I'm making is, um, I like for instance that there's a there's a major catastrophe that happens minutes into the movie, and everybody handles it with 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 grace and confidence, right. and mm -hmm. like 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 I, I like that Kirk feels so in command and in control in this. Right. Exactly. In a way we've not seen before. Exactly. Just feel, and, and again, like it's three years later, and it just really feels like these guys. Because, because uh, not not to not to go against your point, Brandon, but these actors haven't been working together for all these three years. Right. But it feels like they've been on a TV show together. Right. All Indeed, time. I, I um, see where you're coming from. That's fantastic. And this, it, to that point, uh, this in places this did really feel like a higher production value prolonged episode and yeah. I thought that was really interesting and it's something that you said earlier on the ride home was we were talking about how much this fits into the canon of Enterprise and just kind of Star Trek in general yes. um, beyond the, you know the paved over timeline or the alternate continuity go to the alternate universe because I still say it has to be that but whatever kudos for um, the references and things and the references didn't feel gratuitous this time like some of the ones in darkness you know like like the, like right. the whole thing with like the I always bring this up but like like with the Gorn live birth and stuff like right. a, lo a lot of stuff just feels like we went to Wikipedia and we ran and we pulled a thing and this felt like it was written by people that have actually watched Star Trek before. right they were part of people's history and that was exciting people's who they were and bring, bring up Enterprise and we don't want to give too much away but it does surprisingly and weirdly go back to that show specifically and uh, what what's really cool about that is that it's about legacy mm -hmm. and it's about what Starfleet and the Federation are supposed to be from the beginning mm -hmm. and it's the 50th anniversary and I was really bummed out like a lot of people before this year or before I saw this really Probably all the way up until today. <laughs> uh, that I mean, like I was getting more interested in this, but but like that that the only thing we were gonna get for Star Trek for this for the the fiftieth anniversary was another one of these movies, and I can't believe that what I saw is a uh, pretty decent tribute to. To Star Trek. Right. This is your father's Star Trek. <laughs> um, but like, but like, it, 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 uh, I don't know. It just handles that stuff really, really gracefully. And uh, I was I was uh, kind of moved by it by the end. Right. I, I was I was fantastic. There but was, said, there I don't was want to oversell one spot it. where I was moved. Yeah, I mean I don't want to oversell it. This is not a genius movie, but uh, but it, but it knows what it's doing, and that's and and, and that really excited right. me. Um, you haven't said a lot. No. What else? What else do you want to talk about? <laughs> I mean I don't know. I think you covered everything I can think of as far as. I'm just curious to see where they're going to go next. If they do, in fact, make another one of these movies. Um, I hope they kind of keep with the with, with the team they've got, with the right, creative right. team they've got working on it right now. Right. Because uh, like I said, there's been talk about Abrams, and I'm not saying that like this writing team with Abrams would still potentially make a movie this good. Mm. But um, 
But like, I, I just can't believe I'm saying I like this directing a little better. Right. Well, it's, it's kind of a little worrisome though with, with the way pe some people were thinking about how this movie might turn out. Uh, the low turnout we saw inside the theater. I, I hope that's not indicative of I the opening worry about weekend. That because people don't realize that, that you can go to uh, a movie on Thursday at, at, at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Um, well, that's true. Let's just see what, the, what, what the box office is by the end of the weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah, it I used to be a midnight premiere. It's I don't think it'll bomb uh, because it's not opening against anything and because uh, Ghostbusters isn't killing it, like at the box office. So, like, I think it's gonna be it's it's gonna be probably okay. And because uh, after that teaser trailer, they kind of turned around people's interest a little bit with the second trailer. So, right. oh yeah, like uh, like I said on the way down there, I, you asked me if I'd been excited for this movie. I said I got more excited when I saw the last trailer for it. Right. The other, the other big thing I gotta mention is that there are all kinds of stupid things in this movie. In, 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 in my opinion, right. that it makes me it, okay with. Yeah. And that works in the context of the story they're telling. So it's just a little more thoughtful, where they're like, okay, we're, we're going to put some of that goofy, what seems like least common denominator things in there, and then they're like integrated, and why they're there makes sense to me. And it, see, it, the, one of the things that you're specifically talking about with regards to the song that appeared in the trailer and that was in the first one when he's driving the car. Which is actually the worst example. I still have issues with that. But. I do too. It's not tip. It's not typical of anything you'd really see in Star Trek. But, That's not the problem with it. But it's convenient the way it's used. Is all I'm saying. Well, indeed. But I actually like as much of a problem as I have with it. I'm okay with it, and I mm -hmm. liked it, even though it's pr that might be my least favorite thing about it because it's the least Star Trek of anything that I can think of at the moment. But it's still the way they did make it work. I was a little impressed that they got that far with it. Right. Um, real quick, should we mention Search for Spock? Go for uh, it. Sure. Because this was a conversation that uh, that, that Adam I, and I had before before this. Um, it it has a little bit of what Darkness does in that it's Star Trek Two, so it's got to be Wrath of Khan. And this is Star Trek Three, so it's got some Search for Spock in it, but a little bit more subtly and stuff I didn't think of until I walked out of the theater. Where it's going. Oh wait, and then that kind of parallels that, and like, like, like the the parallels were uh, kind of fun and not obvious and gratuitous right. and irritating, for the most part. Right, I think I definitely think that, yeah. But what specifically were, like you said before we turned on the camera, uh, what were some of the specific examples that you uh, were feeling about? The parallels between the two. Well, I can't get into oh, it because it's a non spoiler. Oh, well, that's true. Uh, so I'm feeling it. I feel like you guys would probably also flip yeah, the sign yeah. that way. Um, is this the best of these? Uh, oh, of the Abrams? Thing? Yeah, I think it is. Personally. Yeah, we that's we uh, we got less lens. There were a couple lens flares, but they weren't Abrams lens flares. You can always see what you're looking at in this. Yes, you you can absolutely. And, and I just feel like the directing is so deliberate in this. The lens the lens flare. Even though I mentioned lens flares, yeah. there was definite reason for them. Like when sun came through a window, you right. were gonna get a lens flare. Let's face it. So uh, one thing that I yeah, I wasn't like tallying. But I didn't like bring uh, a notebook, and I was no. Like, but I I did see. I it's did just you see get on the bridge. I could see detail on the bridge this mm -hmm. time. Right. Like, oh, I know yeah. what the bridge looks like. Right. That's exciting. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. I saw an interview with J.J. Abrams where he specifically stated that even his wife was right. like, right. you know, too many lens flares. <laughs> so this was good. Uh, the cinematography was great. Uh, it was interesting the way uh, the, the uh, composer handled the music for this. It was the same theme, but it was also a little toned down. Yeah, just enough. Yeah, you're right. The others were so kind of, bombastic. Oh yeah, but it, yeah. and you you got this, and it kind of flows in and out of right. the storyline, and it was there for the purpose of the storyline, and I never felt like it was, it was overbearing or or just too much. It really kind of fit. But there's one other thing that I wanted to talk to talk to you about. And Real that, quick, if you're going to get off music, though. Oh yeah, go ahead. First of all, there's a new melody in this that I think might might be the Jalen theme, but I'm not sure. Um, that is just freaking gorgeous. Like I didn't think it was Giacchino because it's 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 a little bit it's a little bit outside right. of his wheelhouse, and it's it's beautiful, and it is Giacchino, and it's beautiful. But the other thing, I want to ask you if you noticed this. Mm -hmm. There are a, a few places. It's really subtle. Where it does some uh, some beats in the score that are um, really quick nods to uh, TOS score. 
I did not notice. I did not notice. I'll have to I was for that really on the second impressed viewing. with that. There were there were a few bits where I was like, "Oh, that's super '60s TV." I can't even believe you put that in there. But it's really subtle about it. Just like yeah. the bridge sounds are really yeah. subtle. You know, oh, the score. I you heard the bridge sounds. That. that little. I mean, they they did that in Oh a lot. Yeah, too, but this but this one had a, a good set. It wasn't overbearing, and yeah. the, the sound effects were in check. What was the uh, other uh, point you want to make? The other point I was going to make was you mentioned something about Zoe Saldana's character, Uhura. Uh, she, for me, was basically... A lot of what she was was motivation for Spock. That's what she's yeah. always been. It, uh, but this, more than anything, it played better than it usually has. Uh, uh, yeah, just sure. because of their situation and how that unfolded, I felt like it was more overt, not as obvious. I just like that she wasn't the the, the third wheel of the triad again, mm. especially if she's not going to be interesting. Like, I could live with that to a degree if she was more interesting, but they just don't do a lot with her. Yeah, and she doesn't... Her uh, her linguistic skills don't even come into play all that well. At all, especially uh, given that we do a lot with language in this. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I dug the way they handled universal translators uh, with the other race. That was pretty cool. And maybe, um, we'll go ahead and end here, but, uh, and maybe one of my favorite examples now of, uh, text subtitles on a screen for, uh, alien speed. Mm. This is really cool looking. Like, yeah. they did, like, like, they had a thing with Klingons before, but, like, this one was really cool looking. I don't know. Like, the, you mean, like, the, the type The they English thing, yeah, yeah. And just the way it comes on the screen, I just, I really liked yeah. it. This would be an exa- wait, wait. this would be an example of them actually tackling the problem of in Star Trek they look like they're speaking English when they're speaking English through the Universal Translator. This kind of fixed that. That was a very cool yeah. way about it. Well, anyway, um, I guess I'm really impressed, and I'm hoping I don't have that thing that I've had before, where I go back and I hope you don't either, because good, I think this is actually a solid base. For jump for moving forward for the next movie, and it's a solid Star Trek movie, right? And like the mystery that we built. Finally, through, it's a it, it's a kind of thing that we have seen. Once you find out what things are that that, that, that we have kind of seen in Star Trek before, but like uh, like I thought it was immensely satisfying. Yeah, definitely. I was definitely impressed with it. More than I and Idris Elba got to give a performance, right? Because the villains in these never get to give perform. Well, like yeah. Khan kind of does, yeah, yeah, certainly. Oh, but like, but like, I, it wasn't. But he's got a lot of makeup caked on him, and it's not that. Um, and it's not that Nero thing from 09, where it's like it didn't really matter who played that part. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, I'll never forget that. Sure. Well, everybody, thanks as always for watching. Sure, appreciate it. And if you have seen this movie, let us know what you think about it in the comments. And uh, I will be—I know uh, I've been off the channel for a while, and this is the first thing I posted. Um, I, I, I'm still technically on a break, but I wanted to talk. Like, and I was going to avoid doing uh, uh, like how we felt about it or something on this because I was—I I just knew I was going to be like, "This is great," and then I'm like, eh. but <laughs> because of what it was, I felt like I wanted—we we had to talk about it. Um, but I will be back on Sunday with more stuff, including uh, Geeks Under His Life on eight o'clock uh, at eight o'clock. On Sunday night, so look forward to that. And in the meantime, I am Captain Logan. I'm Brandon. I'm Adam. And we'll see you again next time. <laughs>